हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू स्वीटी स्पीक्स ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल टुडे टॉपिक इज करियर अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन वीएलएसआई इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड द करियर अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन वीएलएसआई लेट अस फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आर डिफरेंट वीएलएसआई डोमेन्स वीएलएसआई डोमेन्स आर कैटेगराइज बेस्ड ऑन सिग्नल्स व्हेन यू कैटेगराइज इट based on signals it can be digital in digital we have only zeros or ones means we believe either a switch is on or off so your entire digital is based on zeros and ones this is the world of digital where we just work on these numbers zeros and ones the second is analog now here you have the analog signals in means you will have some voltages currents such things involved what is mixed signal in mixed signal you have digital as well as analog that's why it's called as mixed signal vlsi domains can also be categorized based on vlsi design flow I had covered about VLSI design design flow in detail in a video lecture. In case you miss that lecture, I am going to share the link in description. You can go through it so that you understand VLSI design flow. Based on this VLSI design flow, the VLSI domain can be front end, where you have the entire design in software. and back end where you actually start realizing this software design into a physical design now let us see what are different career opportunities in front end domain the first career opportunities architect these are mostly senior people who have a long experience in vlsi they are responsible for architecting the design they decide how your design will work what type of features it will have how you are going to implement the functionality such kind of details are decided by architect rtl designer is a person who will code your design into a language we call it as hdl hardware description language the most widely used language in industry now is system verilog rtl designer creates your design using system verilog language now in order to assist you in vlsi process we use certain tools we call them as computer aided designs cad or eda electronic design automation a person who works on these tools is called as cad or eda engineer after that we have design verification now in vlsi design flow we had discussed that design verification is a very broad category it is subdivided into a lot of other categories like verification engineer a person who verifies the functional correctness of the design using say simulation we create uvm test benches uvm is universal verification methodology which is widely used for verifying your design in vlsi industry now verification can be done at ip level ip stands for intellectual property it can be be done at sub system level it can be done at soc level which is system on chip or it can be done at cpu level person who does ip verification becomes ip verification engineer who does soc becomes soc verification engineer who works on cpu becomes cpu verification engineer these are different job roles now we also have emulation engineer first let's understand what is emulation in emulation we create a software model of a chip design and we run it on a emulation platform 
for emulation we most widely use zebu tool nowadays this emulation provides a cycle accurate representation of the chip design behavior it allows your designer to test and debug the design in a realistic environment it is used for chip designers to verify chips which are too complex to be tested using traditional simulation methods so the designs which are very complex to be verified in uvm test bench environment or using simulation we test such designs using emulation after emulation we have fpga engineer they use techniques like fpga prototyping in fpga prototyping we convert the rtl design into a programmable chip synthesized design it works in a similar way to the final chip fpga prototyping will provide us a physical platform which can run hardware design significantly faster compared to software simulation they perform a level of verification which would not be feasible in the simulation another most advanced technique i would say which is being used nowadays is formal verification now formal verification can also take a lot of form one form is connectivity in which we verify the connectivity of a very complex design say socs socs will have thousands of connection which is difficult to verify in simulation or even manually of course we can't verify so much so using formal verification you can easily verify this complex connectivity in the socs another form of formal verification is equivalence checking say your design has changed uh, due to say some power you have uh, reduced the power consumption but you want to check that the functionality remains same now what is equivalence checking is it will take these two designs that should be same functionally and it will try to find out functional differences between them i am actually expecting functionality should be same but if they differ i'll know it by equivalence checking and then i can fix the bugs and make them equal functionally another form of formal verification technique which is very widely used is fpv which is formal property verification in this we write assertions to test the design behavior we can uh, also test arbiter for example you have a arbiter which has four different masters and it should work in round robin so to test the fairness of such arbiter you can use formal verification let us see career opportunities in back end the first job role is physical design engineer in front end the designer designs the rtl design this design is converted into gate net, net list which is given to the physical design engineer the physical design engineer will create a layout and they will place and route these logic gates taking gate level net list as reference why do i need physical design let's take an example say rtl designer designs the circuit assuming that there is a fixed supply voltage and that is, there is no resistance and capacitance between the nets connecting the device but this is not true in the real world we can't assume that similar transistors will have no variation in parameters this is not true in the actual silicon so the job of physical design engineer is they will lay out each transistor in silicon connect them and try to keep all this resistance and capacitance matching within acceptable limits 
I hope with this example you now understood why physical design engineer is very important. The next job role is physical verification engineer. What is the role of physical verification engineer? They will verify the physical layout of your IC chip which was created by the physical design engineer against a set of rules and criteria known as design rules. Some example I will give of these design rules. There is DRC which has design rules to check violation like minimum spacing, minimum width, minimum area. We have layout versus schematic in which your layout is compared to schematic to ensure that they are consistent. We have ERC which is electrical rule check in which we check for electrical rule violations such as signal integrity and power supply noise. We have DFM which stands for design for manufacturability. In this your design is optimized for manufacturing by ensuring that it meets the foundry's manufacturing process requirements. Now STA was actually a part of physical design but it has got so complex, the chip have got so complex that nowadays we have a separate job role called as STA engineer. What is the role of this STA engineer is? First, let's understand what is STA. STA is a method of validating the timing performance of your design by checking all possible paths where there is a possibility of timing violation. STA design engineer is going to generate and verify the timing constraints. Their job is to optimize timing. They perform noise analysis and in case there are some violations found in timing and noise, they'll fix them and they'll repeat the process of verification till there are no violations left. After that we have fabrication engineers. What is fabrication? It is the process of physically manufacturing your IC chip. It has various stages. We have wafer preparation, photolithography, etching, deposition. These are various steps in fabrication. And finally, at the end of fabrication, we have your IC chip manufactured. After your chip is manufactured, we do validation on it. This is done by a person called as post silicon validation engineer. What is post silicon validation? It is a process in which your manufactured design chip is tested for all functional correctness in a lab setup. For example, I have a processor chip. In real world, it is going to be connected to a memory. It is going to be connected to monitor, a keyboard. So I create such kind of lab setup and I test your, the design to ensure that it works on a real hardware which is my real silicon chip in the actual working environment which means these devices memory keyboard monitor all that when it is connected to the manufacturer chip it should perform as expected. The overall goal of my post silicon validation is to ensure that my chip is bug free and it can be used by my end user. We have another technique which is called as DFT. What is DFT? DFT is designed for testability. The job of DFT engineer is to implement test structures like scan chain, BIST. BIST stands for built in self test. This can be used to test the chip. DFT engineers create ATPG which is automatic test pattern generation. These are test patterns which can be used to test your design. These test patterns have access to the internal states of your IC making it possible to test all of the chip's functionality. DFT helps to test the overall quality of your chip. Except this, we have some other job 
roles like analog engineer analog engineers are people who work on analog domain we have mixed signal engineers people who worked on mixed signal mixed signal means a combination of digital and analog we have ams engineer which stands for analog and mixed signal engineer so these are people who have knowledge of analog as well as mixed signal these are all various job roles which are available in vlsi if you are a vlsi fresher or a vlsi aspirant i urge you to first go through the video lecture on vlsi design flow the link is in description understand it thoroughly if you don't understand just rewatch the video again and again till you understand this vlsi design flow completely then you come to this video understand all the career opportunities in vlsi again you can go back to the video till you understand it thoroughly this will help you make an analysis of different job opportunities available and further guide you on what exactly you are interested in i hope these videos are helping vlsi aspirants and i hope i am able to provide knowledge in easily understandable language i am open to suggestions you can give your suggestions or you can give me what other videos you want me to make in the comment section and please share these videos with your friends colleagues college students and other vlsi aspirants so that they can also be benefited by such freely available resources and my aim is to educate youngsters for semiconductors so that we can produce good quality of semiconductor engineers i hope i can play my bit thank you and stay tuned to sweety speaks official youtube channel